So um, let's look at that. First of all, uh, we need to know that uh, there's nothing common between them, to be honest. Okay, so we have, your question was, we have going to and have to, and if we can or why we cannot use them in one sentence. So first, let's know the difference between the two. They're both phrasal verbs. A phrasal verb is a verb plus a preposition which has a specific meaning. When that verb is with a different uh, preposition, it has a different meaning. Uh, and every time you add a different preposition to it, the meaning changes completely. So, but have to is not a phrasal verb. Have to is treated like one verb, And it's called a helping or a modal verb. Whatever you like to call it is the same thing. What does that mean? This means that have to is used with another verb for functioning. So just by itself, have to means nothing. But when you put it with another verb, any other verb, it um, it has a, it has a specific meaning. The meaning of have to is um, mandatory, um, an obligation, uh, something that's necessary to do. And if you don't do it, there are usually negative consequences. For example, I have to put on my seatbelt when driving because there are negative consequences such as um, I can get a ticket, I can uh, get injured in a car accident. So those are at least two negative consequences that if I do not do, then I would have to suffer. So like I said, this verb, uh, where is it? Let's say that. Uh, have to is used with another verb like I said over here. And so here you can see have to put. It's just used with another verb. It's used with put. So in the example from the group, I am going to have to um, do whatever. I forget the example that we did, right? So here it's have to do. That was basically like whatever the verb was, right? So your question is why going to? So going to is, it can be both. It can be a phrasal verb or it can be used for future tense. And we use it like going to plus verb. Um, and it's the future tense that's very <clears throat> planned or sure um, before the moment of speaking. So, for example, if I say I'm going to go for Umrah tomorrow, I planned what I am doing tomorrow before speaking right now, right? So it's a plan. So I'm saying going to, here we go. We're putting it with a verb, going to plus verb. So what's happening here, cut this out. 
<clears throat> in the group, what happened was, I forget what the sentence was, but it's something like this. So, like I said, it's have to plus verb. It's also going to plus verb. So, we're doing a little bit of this. So, going to, I'll put this in a different color just to show you what's happening. Going to have to. That's why it's okay to use it because we just have a lot of verbs going on. We have going to, have to, plus verb, right? I don't know what the example was, but I can find it right now. Um, if you find it before me, please uh, tell me. <clears throat> Rabia, do you know where it is? Because I can't find it. Ma'am, what did you ask? Sorry. Uh, I'm asking what the question was from the group that made you ask me this question. Like, where was, what, what's the example in the group that you used to ask me this? I am going to have to remove you, uh, uh, something like that. Okay, okay. I am going to have to remove you, right? So we have, uh, the rule is going to plus verb. So we have going to have to, but then we have have to plus verb. So we have um, going to, have to remove. So that's, it's just basically, did, does that make sense? Is it clear? Anyone? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay, perfect, excellent. Okay, so we have a nice group today. Um, and uh, Aisha has woken up, so congratulations, everyone. It's 11 o'clock in Canada, and Aisha is awake. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to start the lesson today. Um, okay, today what I wanted to do, and if at any point, if you want any clarification or ask me something about anything that I'm not talking about, please don't be shy and just step in and ask me, okay? Um, what I wanted to do was practice something that seems very simple and very, you know, easy to use, but it is the articles in English, the uh, and, and the, right? They're, they seem very simple. We know the basic rules uh, with the consonant and with a vowel and the for something specific. But when we use them in a proper sentence, when we're actually putting them to use, uh, we tend to make a lot of mistakes with them. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to give you guys a very simple object, daily simple object that I'm going to ask you guys to volunteer and we're going to make definitions of that object. So I'll give you a simple object. You will give me a definition of that object. For example, if I say uh, the word sun, right? So the definition can be um, so here we go, we have the sun, is a star that provides a light and heat. So we have the sun because we're talking about one specific thing that we are asking about and talking about. And uh, most of us, we know that we only have one sun, right? And then it's a star because most of us, we know that we have many stars and the, star, and the sun is one of them. So this is how I want to, I want you guys to give me a definition. Don't tell me what this, word means to you or don't tell me a story about the word but I want you to define the word for me okay so and you can volunteer and um you know we'll take 
if you ha you have your phone in hand uh, and you can raise your hand, it will just be easier so everyone can get a turn and I can see who's participating. But if you don't want to raise your hand, you can just start talking. It's also not a problem. So let's do the first object. And I will listen to a few definitions, okay? Before I actually start correcting, I will write down the definitions. So the first word I'm gonna give you is calendar. Calendar. <clears throat> so who would like to start with a definition? What is a calendar? If you have to give me a definition or define what a calendar is, how would you define it? So, Patrick, do you want to try? I'm definitely with this uh, the call for the prayer going on. So I just. Oh, okay, take... okay. Patrick has, Patrick has a legitimate excuse. Aisha, you have no call of prayer happening. A calendar is a thing, is a book with lots of dates on it in the days of the week. A calendar is a book. Say it again. Um, like the days of the week. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Could you read it and then complete it? A calendar is a book with lots of dates to remind you of the days of the week. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Any we will correct this afterwards. Anyone else? Who else would like to give me a definition of what a calendar is? Amina, Junaid. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to give answer to this question. Okay. Uh, 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 a calendar uh, is a book that provides us details uh, of days, weeks, and months. Um, I, I missed the word. I missed the word after provides us the provide us the details of. Uh -huh. of days, weeks, and months. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, I need you more. <laughs> I need more uh, sentences. Tarek, you're free now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, a calendar is something that keeps on changing each and every day. So it's never the same. Okay, and I have Moaz wrote a definition. I will just copy it down. Calendar in a chart. Okay, Zuneda, can you give me a sentence? I can try. Yes. Uh, piece of papers. Put, uh, okay, piece of papers with dates on, put together uh, to keep up with, with, I don't know what to say, with time. Okay. Okay, I think we have a good bunch. Uh, let's start correcting these. Okay, now what, what are we correcting? We're correcting the structure every cent every definition is a good definition i'm not i'm not going to decide if uh uh oh i'm in a, i'm gonna you don't want to use your mic calendar mathematical representation of dates and times there you go excellent okay so i'm not giving i'm not going to decide whose definition is the best, I'm going to decide who has the least. Uh, okay. No problem, Amina. 
So the, I'm going to decide who we're, we're deciding the grammatical structure of the sentence, which is better, which is, you know, like we're, we're correcting that. Okay. So it's not about who has a better definition. This is why I'm giving you guys simple, ordinary objects. Let's start with Aisha's. A calendar is a book. It's not necessarily a book, but because I said, I'm not going to do that. We'll leave it at that, but it can be, it can be on your phone. It can be on your computer, not really a book, right? So a calendar is a book with lots of dates to remind you of the day of the week. Um, so we have a calendar, it's a book to remind you of the day of the week. I would change this over here. Um, I would not say you, I would write one. I would not say book. I would use a different word. I would say a tool. It's a tool or, um, yeah, that's the only word I can think of right now, but something like that uh, with lots of dates. We don't have to say lots of, we could just say with dates. There's no reason to put lots of, there's just your dates on there uh, to remind you of the day of the week. Uh, perfect. If a calendar doesn't really remind you, a calendar tells you, right? Because a calendar, unless you put something on the calendar, how is the calendar going to remind you of something, right? So to tell one of the day of the week, this would be, now it's a good definition. A calendar is a book. So like I said, it's not really a book because it can be on your um, tablet, on your phone, etc. cetera, uh, that provides us with, so we want to add the preposition that provides us with the details of the days, weeks, and months. That's very good. Um, a calendar is something that keeps on changing each and every day. Um, yes, it does. A calendar is a chart that has days. And I like how you use something. So the use of something is very good. We didn't, we didn't really say book or something. So we can just say something, absolutely. A calendar is a chart, yes, that has days, weeks, and months on it. Very good, very good. Uh, got piece of papers. So here we, we don't have any article over here, right? So is it a piece of papers or you need to have some subject? The, the subject is missing in the sentence. I want to say a calendar um, is um, and again, I mean, yes, you could also have piece of papers, but you're not going to say that because piece of papers means Someone took a pair of scissors and cut up the papers, right? So a calendar is a bunch of papers together with dates on them uh, So I'm going to remove the put together here. We're going to put them at the beginning uh, to keep up with, I don't know what to say, with time. So that was just a thinking out loud, right? The reason I put it there is because if you don't know what to say, you just you can just pause, right? So with dates on them to keep up with time. You see, it just sounds better, it flows better. And this is why you're here. You're here to sound more fluent. So when we're speaking, there's a lot of times when we don't really know what to say, we forget the word, it's on the tip of our tongue. So to be more fluent, you just pause. It's okay to pause. And it's actually, it makes you sound smarter and more fluent when you pause uh, to keep up with time, okay? Um, so here we need a, right? So a calendar is a mathematical representation of dates and time. Okay, yeah, why not? Why not? Very good. Okay, any questions before I give you a new word? Okay, excellent. No one has any questions. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, how calendar keeps on changing each and every day? How calendar? I asked how calendar keeps on changing each and every day. Uh, basically, it's about my sentence. So. Yes, yes. But I want to first fix the question. Can we yeah. fix the question? This question is, we have to fix the grammar of the question first. What is missing in this question? 
There's no auxiliary verb in here. How can a So how can, not really, not can. Another, I want an auxiliary. Can is not an auxiliary. Does, yes, Mulans. Yes, yeah. yes, Mulans also said it. How does a calendar, and we don't need an S over here because now we just put an auxiliary. Okay, so now that's a better question. How does a calendar keep on changing each and every day? Um, like I said, I'm not going to be correcting the definition of calendar, but uh, it changes because hopefully every day is a new date. There would be a difficulty with life if every day was August 5th, right? So tomorrow will be a new calendar date because it's going to be August 6th and you might have something on it. It might be your birthday. It might be Eid. It might be whatever else. So, you know, that's, I guess that's what it means. But um, I, I want to, like I said, I want to focus more on the grammar of the sentences than um, the philosophical aspects of them. Um, Janet has a question. Why do we use with before the details? So where is details? Where is it? Okay, uh, a calendar is a book or a tool that provides us with details. Uh, it's we're not using with with details. So I'm gonna write the question down. Why do we use with before the details? Um, we're not, we're not using it with, with, with that. Um, with is going after provides us. I hope that's clear, Jeanette, because it's not, it's, um, the with is not going with the detail. The with is going with uh, provides us, or with provides. So because it's a phrasal verb, provide with, I cannot type. Provide with is a phrasal verb. Remember phrasal verbs like we discussed is a verb plus a preposition that has a specific meaning and there's no, there's no why. This is, that's how it is. And usually when we have, a, when we have a prepositions, usually not all the time, but 99% of the time, Prepositions are, are stuck with a verb, not with a noun. Detail is a noun. Provide is a verb. And so we can say provide with or provide someone with. You can separate it and you can put a, uh, a pronoun or a noun in there like that. Good question. Excellent questions. Both of the questions are very good. Any other question? Tarek, I think you have a question. Uh, no, ma'am, I do not have. I just keep my microphone Why on. Why not? Excellent. So that I do not have to. Yeah. Why not? Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Let's go uh, to the next word. You're welcome, Janet. Let's go to the next word. I'm going to give you um, Instagram. So I want some good definitions, meaning, nice, detailed sentences with correct grammar. You, and somewhat true definitions, obviously, but don't be shy and um, keep them coming. Let's see, what does the word, what's the word, if I don't know what the word Instagram is, okay, what's it, what's Instagram? How would you de describe or define Instagram? This time I want everyone to go even the ones who didn't go in the last round. Mm -hmm. Instagram is a platform for being social. Okay. Or for good. social, for being social. Okay, very good. I'm gonna put an asterisk. The asterisk will always mean, uh, I will explain the pronunciation always, okay? So the Asterix is pronunciation, but I will come back to that afterwards. Okay. Uh, Tarek. Me. 
Okay. Uh, Instagram is a tool that uh, just allow me a minute. Instagram is a tool that decreases the distance by creating them, by increasing it or something like this. That decreases the distance by increasing it. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I, know, I heard it. I heard it. Okay. <laughs> so the Instagram is a social media application to socialize with others. That's Moaz. And then, uh, Junaid, you also kept your mic off because you also have siblings around you. Instagram yeah. is a social media platform. Aisha, if you're still awake, your turn. Instagram is a platform where you can um, post pictures or talk to your friends. Very good. And Amina, Rabia, did you already go? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you already went. Who hasn't who hasn't gone yet? Zilehoma, I haven't heard from you, I think. Yeah. Uh, Instagram is a, a social media application uh, for uploading your uh, photographs, videos, and um, Videos and uh, pictures. What, sorry? Videos and uh, door events. Excellent. Okay. Is there anyone remaining who hasn't been, or should we start correcting? I didn't define it. I couldn't hear you. Okay. Yes, Rabia, go for it. Instagram is a social media app uh, where you can learn a lot of new things like makeup tutorials and uh, socialize with others. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I'm just gonna write one sentence here. Okay, let's do some corrections, okay? Um, when we say platform, okay, remember that the A in platform is the same A as in Apple, okay? It's not the A in late. So it's not plate, but it's plat, like apple. We don't eat an apple, so we don't say a for the, so it's a platform. These pronunciation tips are very important because maybe your sentence is amazing, but a little bit of a pronunciation error can, um, can make you sound less competent. But Instagram is a platform for being social. Very good. Instagram is a tool that decreases in general, so not one distance, but in general, it decreases distances by increasing them. Or something like that. That was just me telling you, thinking out loud. Very good. Uh, here, we don't need the, okay, because Instagram is a proper name, like Amina or Junaid or Rabia, Siddiqua, it's a proper name. So we don't put the with proper, proper nouns. So Instagram is a social media application to socialize with, in general, 
others. We need the S after others. Instagram is a social media platform that is used for connecting with people online. Very good. Instagram is a platform where you can post pictures or talk to your friends. Excellent. You can also say, talk with your friends, talk to your friends. It's not right or wrong either way. In some cases, talk to is when you talk about something specific. When you talk to someone is you have a specific thing to talk about. But talk with is the general idea of talking and having a conversation. That's the difference. So I would prefer with, but it's not really wrong to say to. Instagram is a social media. So no, it's not a social media. It's a social media application or a platform. You have to put something over here. It's a platform or an app, uh, etc. cetera, because um, social media is an umbrella word and it's non-count. Uh, to communicate with the whole world, but only by a single click, I would cut by from here and I would put it over here. By only a single click. It just sounds better and it's better to use it like that. Instagram is a social media application for uploading photographs, videos, and your current events and your events. Um, instead of saying your events, a better thing to say would be, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Can someone help me when we're, um, oh, what, what do we say when we go on Instagram and we want to see what's happening? Writings, um, writings. No, not writing. Uh, stories. Updating. Updating, that's the word. Thank you. Look, she's awake. Okay. And updating um, your followers. That would be better for Instagram. Um, <clears throat> Oh, and another word, uh, I'm in a wrote stories. Another word could also be updating your followers or also you could say, uh, and posting stories. Absolutely. So that's a good one, I'm in a posting stories. Excellent. In you're welcome, Zelihoma. Instagram is a social media app. I like when we use the word app instead of application because it's cooler. It's what we normally use. You know how there's always two ways of saying something and one is just a more common, more um, more spoken way. So app is a better way word to use than application, to be very honest, where you can learn a lot of new things like makeup tutorials and socialize with others. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Ma'am, sorry, I didn't define yet. How can we fix this? I haven't defined it yet. Yes, because we used yet, right? So when we use yet, we have to use haven't, and we have to put um, this like this. Very good. Very good. Okay. Any questions from this box of uh, Instagram? I just went through all the corrections that didn't ask you. So now I'm leaving it to you. If you want to ask me a question, why something is this way or why something is not that way. What is your Instagram ID? Sorry? No, nothing. I'm just oh, fi finally, what is Instagram? <laughs> that, that is a question of the day. Um, I, I was asking what is your Instagram ID? But I was just kidding. I, I can't. I couldn't hear you. I can't hear the last word you're saying. Mm, I was saying ID, Instagram ID, like ID. something. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What What's an Instagram ID? Because we here we're going to say what's an Instagram ID. Okay, you see over here. Oh, I think I missed a mistake. Instagram is a social media platform or app. Here we. I forgot to fix this. It's used to communicate with the whole world by only a single click. That's very good then. Okay, if there are no questions about the corrections I've made, 
Why do we use the before sun? It's a good question. Because the sun is not a proper name. So the question is, I'm going to put it under here. Why do we use the before sun? Because sun isn't a proper name. Uh, there are, we only have one sun, but our sun is not the only sun in the universe. Um, the same thing, like we also have only one moon, but we say the moon. Did you see the moon? I can see the moon. When will the moon come out? Because we know that just because you have one moon doesn't mean that there's only one moon in the universe. It's not a proper name. If you want to call the moon a proper name, like you want to give it a name from now on, from tomorrow you want to call the moon Jack, then you don't have to say the Jack because you just gave him a name. But the moon isn't isn't a name. It's just like the word planet, right? So the word moon, planet, star, and sun are not proper names. So we live, we live on a planet because there are many other planets, but we only have one planet, but there are other planets, right? Uh, the planet we live on is near Mars because Mars is a proper name. The planet isn't a proper name. What about planets named their proper or I mean, this is exactly what I'm explaining. So um, planet names are proper now. So I didn't say the Mars. I said Mars is the name of a planet. So um, our planet is Earth, not the Earth, but Earth. But sometimes we use the word Earth as a mitti. And if we use it as mitti, then we have to put the Earth. Like I bought the Earth yesterday for my backyard. That's mitti, right? But then we don't put Earth with a capital E, we put it with a small e. To differentiate from the name of our planet and Mitty. Um, so that I hope that's uh, clear. Uh, Janet? Yes, ma'am, it is clear now. Excellent. Thank Excellent. You. You're welcome. So that's why, I mean, we want to. So I also have only one child, right? But I don't say the child is upstairs. Right? I'm not going to say that because the child has a name, right? <laughs> and even though I only have one, but I'm just going to say I have a child upstairs because I only have one, but she isn't the only child in the world, right? <laughs> so it's it's like we don't um, we don't have uh, it, it's not about what we have. It's about it's not about how many you have or how many there are. It's about, is it a common noun or a proper noun? That is what the, what the thing is. That, that's what the thing is, right? So uh, like in India, when I was studying these things at first, they told us it's about the numbers as well. So there is only one sun in, in our galaxy. So that's why it is the sun. So there is one Taj Mahal. So that's why it is the Taj Mahal. So it, um, it's not necessarily. The Taj Mahal is um, uh, it, it's a proper noun as well. But the the Taj when you're putting the oh, let me explain this Taj Mahal the whole thing is a proper noun. But when you put the Taj Mahal, it's the is going with Mahal, not with Taj. And when you put, when you say the Taj Mahal, Taj is now an adjective. Because yeah. then we also have in Pakistan, we, <laughs> the Shish Mahal, right? We so, do have this in India as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, you copied uh, it, Tarek, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> 
<laughs> sure, man. The Mughals did. <laughs> I know. Okay, so you see, it's going with Mahal, right? So same thing with, um, oops, the Buckingham Palace, right? Buckingham is too long to type. So it's the Buckingham Palace because it's the palace and Buckingham is acting like an adjective in there because there are many palaces around the world. There are many mahals around the world, but we're talking about the Buckingham Palace. So, I mean, if that helps you remember, if that rule helps you remember, why not? As long as you use it correctly, you can mem memorize or learn something, whatever way it works for you, because the why is never important. It's as long as yeah. you're using it correctly, whatever makes you remember it. I that's that's good. Yeah, we we just need to cancel the teacher certificate here in India. Yeah. <laughs> well, she she did a good job that you remembered, right? She or he, they they did something that you know you remember. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. Oh, and it's not updating that the word I was looking for. It just came to me. Uh, I mean, thank you for saying that. But I think the word I was looking for was uploading and mm -hmm. uploading uh, your stuff. And then you can also say updating your followers. But the word I was looking was for uploading. That's the word I was looking for. Um, Ma'am, can you please repeat the point of Taj Mahal and that and the Taj Mahal? Um, when we, over here, where is it? Okay, so when I say, I will see the Taj Mahal when I go to India, right? It's because I'm saying the Mahal because the Taj acts like an adjective in this. So it's, it's not a the Taj is a proper noun, but not Taj Mahal itself is not a proper noun. It's just describing which Mahal because um, there are many, many Mahals, but we're talking about the specific Taj Mahal or the specific Buckingham Palace because there's many palaces around the world, right? But we're talking about the Buckingham Palace. So the the, the is not going with Taj Mahal, it's going with just Mahal. That's what I want to say. Like. The article is not going with Taj. The article is, the yellow is highlighted to show you where uh, the article is going or what the article is going with. Okay. Um, let's do one more round. Okay. So one more round to just get everyone else. Can we use talk to for a conversation with a specific person, especially in a case when I have to discuss various, exactly, Janet. So if you look over here, if you look over here in, blue that's exactly so talk to is when you want to talk about something specific maybe some some to someone specific or to a few people like i want to talk to you all about something or i just want to talk to you Janet, about something it's not about a specific person but when i say i want to talk to you all you know i want to tell you something very specific but when i want to talk with you about something I'm just talking with you guys. I'm just we're just having a conversation. There's no specific task I'm talking about or specific topic. Good questions. Excellent. Um, I'm going to give you guys a verb now. I've given you guys two nouns to describe. I'm going to give you a verb to describe. So the verb is invite. Anyone can begin. It's a little bit difficult, not difficult, it's a little bit different when you're defining a verb as opposed to a noun, but let's see what you guys can do. Mm. Um, and why it is a verb which is used to am I audible? Uh, a little bit. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm writing it down as well. 
and white is a verb which is used to uh, call on something to join an event or to spend time uh, with you, something like that, with us or you. Okay. Uh, Amina, you wrote, I invited my friends on Eid. That is excellent. But that's not the definition of invite. I want to know what invite means, the definition of invite. Uh, politely asking someone to do something very specific. Excellent. So, Jamed, Moaz, Aisha, Tarek. Okay, we have Moaz. I'm just going to write this down. Invite is a verb. Make a request to go somewhere or to do something. And Amina wrote, invite means someone Okay. Oh, and we have Janet invite is a word. Oh, is a word that is used to. Okay, so I have Moaz, I have Janet, and I have Amina. Um, okay. Is it my turn? So yes, go. In, invite, invite is a verb which we use to ask somebody to do something. Oh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay, I have to invite is a word that is used to ask someone for a get together. Okay, so what's the other sentence that um, I cannot find your sentence? Invite. I mean, I wrote the sentence already. If you can see my screen, it's already here. Invite means to ask someone for discussing any idea. Uh, now you have one more. Invite is a word. Okay, Aisha, what is invite? Invite is um, no, that's not my answer. Okay, come on, I'm waiting then. I don't know. Invite is a verb, um, to. Um. Take your time, think, and come back. I'm going to write this sentence from Moaz. Invite is a verb. Invite is a verb to ask someone to do something for you or do something with you. Very good. Okay, I think we got lots of sentences. 
So let's start uh, correcting these. Invite is a verb which is used to call on something. Someone, you, you already corrected it. Yes, to join an event or to spend time with you. Very good. Uh, invite is a verb, politely asking something to do someone to do something very specific, not necessarily very specific. I mean, not necessarily, right? Just politely asking someone to do something, right? I invite you to answer this question. I invite you to come over to my house. Invite is a verb to make a request to go somewhere or to do something. Invite is a verb, uh, not to make a request, to, to request. We just say to request to go somewhere or do something. That would be better. It might mean to ask someone for discussing any idea, it's better to say an idea, not any idea. Um, invite is a word that is used to ask someone for joining a party. Yes, why not? Invite is a verb which we use to ask somebody to do something, why not? It's a word that is used to ask someone for a get together. So here I would say, just put the verb. So we say to get together. Get together is better used as a verb and therefore we're gonna put an infinitive before it. So to ask someone to get together, invite is a word to call up someone uh, for any work or discussion. Um, I would remove up from here and I would put it over here to call someone up for any work or discussion or you don't really need any for work or discussion. Now it's much better. Invite is a request for, so here participate is a verb. You want to use to, to participate um, in any event. But not really, because it doesn't mean you, if you participate, is a request to participate. You're right, you're right, I'm sorry. Invite is a verb to ask someone to do something for you or do something with you, very good. Invite is a verb used to make a request to go somewhere or to do something. Here, you don't need to again, because we already put infinitive once. We don't need to put it again. So one infinitive is usually more than enough. Ma'am, I write a second sentence. Ma'am, I wrote a second sentence, past tense. Uh, write mine too, it's above. So first of all, you need the apostrophe here. Um, and then that's basically it, okay. Um, when you're speaking, you can say ma'am or anything, but it's really important to know that this is how we, how we spell ma'am. A really important thing because MAM means nothing in English. I'm reading it as you're saying it, but it's really important to put the thing because this word it comes from the French word this, which basically translates to ma dame, which basically means my lady, which is what Britishers have used as a um, thing in English in in. Uh, in Canada or in any in most Western countries, we in English we don't say "ma'am" now because it's it's considered very 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 formal. Um, I know that you guys are saying it out of respect to me, and um, and I know that you you know that's what you're using out of respect. I love it. Thank you very much. But um, just to let you know, in case you are here and you meet someone, then it's considered very 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 formal. Um, but um, basically that's where it comes from. So it's madame, which becomes yeah. ma'am, and then we say ma'am. So it's just basically that's where it comes from, just a little vocabulary for you guys. Any questions from the invite um, definitions or anything else? In which sentences on invite two types of words? In the sentences on invite two types of words which and that, so which is used, is correct or that is used? Great question, great question. That and which are the same. Use whatever you like. 
that, and who are the same. Use whichever one you like. But who and which are not the same. Which is for objects and who is for people. That is for both. So it's really, really okay. So it's which is used, right? It's fine. And that is used is also fine. This is called um, this, this is called uh, adjective clauses, adjective or relative clauses. So if, if you want to look that up and, and read more about it or learn more about it, it's called adjective or relative clauses. But in a quick explanation, you can say both. They're absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. I think I think that the verb the word that is a little bit more common, but that's just me thinking out loud. It's not it's not a rule or anything. Okay, so Basically, thank you everyone so much for uh, coming today, being active, all of you, each and every one of you. You guys are amazing, mashallah, and we're going to have a break. So I'm going to be seeing you in a little bit less than a month, right? So September 2nd, inshallah, will be our next workshop. Um, wow. I will try my very best to sort of stay connected and if I have a you know, some free time. I'll put some challenge for you guys when I'm when I'm not, you know, doing ibadat or something, then I will definitely try to stay connected with you guys. At least update you guys and send you guys some pictures. Inshallah, I will definitely keep up on that. But meanwhile, um, you know, keep watching, keep learning, keep listening. Uh, maybe start making, take a piece of paper and start making questions that you want to ask me as you think of something. Start making a list of questions you want to ask me when I come back, you know, so that will be, we will have a lot of things to discuss then. Uh, absolutely, Zelehuma, uh, all of you will be in my prayers and um, inshallah, um, pray for me too, and Aisha, and inshallah, we'll be back soon and um, um, take care, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Take journey care. full of barakah and hair. Thank you so Allah. much. Thank you. Allah Hafiz, ma'am. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Allah Hafiz.